discuss the role of hormones and or genes in gender development. Biological sex is determined by genes which are on chromosomes. Humans generally have 23 pairs of chromosomes, one pair of which determines sex. Females have an XX pair while males have an XY pair. Chromosomal sex largely controls how masculine or feminine the egg's development will be. Chromosomal sex controls whether an embryo will develop ovaries or testes. The SRY gene on the Y chromosome, which only males possess, will cause the gonad, the organ which produces sex cells, to develop testes. A female's gonad will develop into ovaries due to the absence of the SRY gene. External genitalia strongly influences gender development through the, through the effect of hormones which, which they produce and due to psychological and social factors. Hormones also affect the development of the genitalia. Androgens, male hormones, such as testosterone, stimulate the development of male sex organs. Genetic females who are exposed prenatally to high levels of androgens may therefore develop ambiguous genitalia and the baby may appear externally to be male. Similarly, genetic males with too little androgens may appear externally to be female. This condition is known as androgen insensitivity syndrome, or AIS. Hormones also have a powerful effect on the development of the brain. It is suggested that the testes formed from the Y chromosome release higher levels of testosterone, which masculinizes an area of the hypothalamus called the sexually dimorphic nucleus, SDN, before birth. In heterosexual males, the SDN is five to eight times larger than females, and it is proposed this is this difference which causes differences in male and female behaviours and causes people to feel male or female. Research has demonstrated the effect of hormones on gender development. Dedi et al. found that in biological females, high levels of salivary testosterone were linked with low scores or measures of maternal personality. This suggests that testosterone makes the brain more masculine. However, the relationship may not be causal as correlation does not imply causation. For example, testosterone may affect the levels of other hormones which may affect maternal personality. However, there is evidence that biological sex is not the main factor in gender development. Money and Earhart claim that the sex that the child is reared as is more important than their chromosomal sex. They believed that intersex individuals could be successfully raised as either a girl or a boy and that biological males could be raised as girls and biological females could be raised as boys. Money's theory, however, has been disputed by the case of David Reimer, who is genetically male but was raised as a girl under Money's recommendation after a botched circumcision. Despite being given hormone treatments in order to develop an outwardly female appearance, Reimer became isolated and depressed and reverted back to being male immediately after finding out his true sex. This suggests that chromosomal sex is crucial to gender development, conflicting with Money's claims. This outcome has also been supported by further research. Reiner and Gerhardt studied 16 biological males born with almost no penis. Of the 14 who were raised female, eight reassigned themselves as male by the age of 16. This high rate suggests that biological factors have a key role in gender development. The effects of testosterone masculinizing a developing fetus has been confirmed in non-human species. Diamond, 1950, injected rat fetuses with testosterone and at birth the female rat's genitalia was more male-like and as young rats they displayed more male-like behaviour. Gorski, 1980, also injected rats with testosterone in utero and dissected their brains after birth finding a larger SDN in the female rats. Both provide evidence that high levels of testosterone in utero masculinises the external genitalia and the brain. Although both were high in internal validity, caution sh should be taken in generalising the results of non-human experiments. Swab, 1997, found that the SDNs in human brains obtained during post-mortems were larger in males than females. Swab then looked at the brains of transsexuals comparing across to his original research as a form of control group and found that the SDN of a male to female transsexual was a similar size to that of a normal female's SDN. This suggests that gender identity is a result of biological factors, 
although methodological issues such as a small sample and the possibility that the smaller SDN could have been an artefact of hormone therapy during the sexual transition should be considered. Although biological factors are important to gender development, other factors are also key. For example, Dessens et al. studied 250 genetic females who were prenatally exposed to high levels of androgens, but still raised female. 95% were content with their female gender, with only 5% experiencing significant gender dysphoria. This shows that other factors are important to gender development. This is one main criticism of the biological approach. It's too reductionist. This research has real world applications. For a long time, the Olympic Committee ruled that people with XX chromosomes must compete in female events, while people with XY chromosomes must compete in male events. However, due to research on gender development, there was a ruling in 1991 that genetic sex would no longer determine entry into the Olympics. You'll notice on the slides that there are some questions in yellow. These are all research methodology questions designed to help you practice your research. If you'd like a full copy of this PowerPoint with uh, answers to all the questions in yellow, then um, send me a tweet. It's at blonde underscore pretzel and I'll get in touch with the information. Thanks. Good luck.